morning, y'all. Um, I'm going to talk this morning about some things that the Lord really laid in my heart, been on my heart. <clears throat> Out of Philippians 4, 4 through 8. But also, Acts was highlighted this morning, 1 through 12. 13, 1 through 12. So, I'm just going to kind of dive into it, but those are the scriptures. But the Philippians 1 is about, in the King James Version, it says, be careful for nothing. But we've got to bring it to the Lord, guys. Supplication and prayer. And then you read the parts of it, and it says, he'll guard our hearts and our minds. Why? Because he wants us to be in tune with him. We've got to get back, guys. And then a little bit earlier on, which is in 1 through 4, but it talks about the book of life. Their names are written in the book of life. Well, guess what, guys? you got a book of life right in front of you, the Bible. It's a living, breathing word. It's not the book of life, but it is one of the books of life. And it is. It's full of life. And that much more abundantly. That's why the prayer is so important, guys. Bring it to Him. We've got. I'm not giving this country back over to the over to the enemy. Okay. I hear this. This this is the lamest argument I've heard. That we're all like. I'm not following Trump because of he's beating a drum. I'm standing with him on the abortion issue, guys. That's the main one. I'm standing against the evil that's trying to come. They say, oh, all lives matter. Well, no, they don't. It's just theirs, the power and the greed and the money. Quit lying to us. Why are we? Why are you believing it? Anyhow, I'm not politicizing this. I'm saying that's why I'm taking a stance. And it's not even taking a stance. I'm praying. I'm bringing it to the Lord every single day in prayer and supplication. And you should too. And that's how we're going to win this battle. Not in the courts. Not in the election. But at the altar. On our knees. Bringing it to the Lord. Because, yes, I mean, look at it. If, all, if, if any lives matter other than theirs, no. It's, they're already, wear a mask, lock you down. Don't care about your business. Don't care about your life. Don't care about your families. Don't care about the living or the unborn. All they want to do is stay in power and make their millions. It's a handful of people. Why are we letting them do that? Instead, everybody's saying we're following Trump or whatever. No, I'm not. Listen to my message about him winning in the landslide. I said I'm not necessarily a Trump fan. I'm just standing because I know where he's standing on the abortion issue and the lives that do matter. And he's standing for the Christian values. You say anything about being a Christian... Now, it's, now, you know, it's like being an open target. Oh, well. But if you're pro-choice, or you talk about gay, or you're, or you're gay, you want to talk about that issue, and you can spout and spit out whatever you want, or atheist, all the hatred, vomit, they talk about some Hindu religious holiday instead of Christmas, Thanksgiving. Guys, we've got to bring this to the altar. All of us, and make a stance. We, one of my messages is we've missed the whole reason behind Daniel and the lion's den. It wasn't to save his butt from getting... Destroyed by a lion. It was to change the nation. 
Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, the same thing. Our God is able, even if he doesn't. King Saul, four, not three, changed the nation. You want to change this, you want to change this nation in this equation? Pray, seek him, supplication and prayer. He'll guard your mind and your heart from all this pollution. And give us direction. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost and his word. Come on, guys. Pick up your Bible. Let's get this done. So we love you. Um, I'm going to make this short because I've got so much to do. I will give you some things, okay? Because the enemy's trying to wear out the, oh, the saints of God. Okay. Just going to give you some examples, and you, I, I guarantee you that some of y'all listening have some very, very, I mean, not the same things, but just the weariness. My wife had to spend some time in the hospital, eight days, okay, just dealing with all that mess. One day she needed some some clothes, three hours. Still didn't get him to her. Big hospital, toss bunches of buildings. The next day, started at 7.30 in the morning. You know what time I got her a change of clothes? Five o'clock at night. And wear me out over something simple. Rules and all this other stuff. Well, that became a message though, guys, because I was down there. What should be ground zero with that what they're portraying, what they're, what they're lying to us about, which we all know, but it's like right in your face, blatant. Big hospital chain, 20 buildings, some of them dedicated just for king, huge buildings. Dallas, big, big, big city, big hospital. Man, there's no refrigerated truck out there, there's no temporary morgue, there's no ambulances flying in and out, there's no doctors ripping and running with stretchers and nurses. Worst that happened was some young security guard yelled at me for crossing the red line. I'm like, dude, I didn't even see the red line. I'm just walking in the building. More about wearing your mask. And... Okay, so then she gets out. There's even more to it, but so my phone breaks while she's in the hospital. The fifth one, guys. Third one, two months before that, I got a third brand new one, and it went out within two months from a major carrier. So I'm dealing with them and the manufacturer. My fifth one, guys, took me 10 days to get one of the, on the third phone. Then I get it, and it breaks. And then I go to the manufacturer. It took another week to get to get there. They give me one. They're busy. They didn't charge it all the way. I get home. That one's broke. Brand new, guys. Told a friend of mine, it's in the box. Brand new box. Box works great. Phone doesn't. I just got one. And I got there. The fifth one. This one's working okay. I'm telling you this for a reason. Because there's things that we could be anxious about. Stressed. But no. Election being one of them, too, of course. Big one. But he wants us to bring it to him in prayer. So <clears throat> now my phone works. Well, YouTube took one of my videos down about there, that there is no pandemic. The disease is very real, guys, okay? I get that. There was one... I'll give you some examples. I still cry and pray. Been on the news for six, eight months ago. A young couple, many people have perished from this. I get that. Sad. Pray for them. A young couple, they lost a two-year-old baby. Really young baby to the, to the disease. I still lift them up in prayer. 
But I also let the prayer of these crazy people, older black guy that was shot and killed by all these people, and violent protesters. I'm getting somewhere with this. The enemy's coming in like a flood to wear us out with the violence. So, <clears throat> phone broke. Wife gets out of the hospital. I'm exhausted. She's exhausted. 10 o'clock at night. I hear this bam, like loud, I mean like really loud in glass. I wake up, it's like 10 o'clock, we just got to bed at, at nine. Man, I'm exhausted. One thirty in the morning, I'd see all these flashing lights. Cop, I didn't know it was the cops, but I thought it was the ambulance. Said, well, I live in a neighborhood where there's a lot of old people, so I was like, man, I'm just gonna pray for these people because my neighbor's 80, the lady next door is in their 90s, they've all got health issues. I hope nothing's wrong with any of them, you know. So I just prayed, went back to sleep. You know, next morning, a guy in a stolen car that was stolen two weeks before. Hit my car, parked in front of my house. That's why the police were there, Dallas and Garland. They chased him. Guys, he hit it so hard. He didn't knock it into my yard, into my neighbor's yard, two houses down, and it hit a parked car and pushed it out of the way and spun around and was in the middle of this guy's backyard backwards or whatever. That was on the third. What's today? Insurance company's just now towing my car. I'm like, guys, I got insurance. He had insurance. It's, it's like, where am I? I just got my phone fixed yesterday. So I had no car, no phone. Like, man, do I just rent one? Do I get my own car? You know, fortunately, we have a friend that, you know, they loaned us a car with some kind of they don't even use it. it was a, it's a sports car. It's like, man, it's a $40,000 sports car. What am I going to do driving that, you know? But still. And then I have it. So it wore me out with other stuff, too. But I've got to keep bringing it. I told my wife, I said, but that's not the only thing. But I'm on the wheel with some other stuff in the ministry and the censorship and some books that I'm writing that the Lord had me write and censored by some, some of these companies and different things actually taken off after being out there for over a year and um, i've got it and I'm, it's like man okay lord but i told my wife i said i'm on the wheel and i don't feel like i'm supposed to get off right now and do some things i'm still doing things i'm doing what the lord tells me to do but what i want to do I'm staying on the wheel until the Lord's finished. <clears throat> but that's part of the prayer and supplication. Some of us are in the same, some of us are going to have similar, some of us are going to have different, but we've got to bring it to the Lord. In prayer and supplication. That's why I'm one of the messages I've got out about the 5 a.m. prayer guide. It's time to start praying. And I've ministered to somebody actually at the manufacturer where my phone was, the manager wanted to kick me out because I wouldn't wear my mask over my nose. I said, man, I, ma'am, I got some health problems and it's very, very hard to breathe and I really don't want to discuss them with you and I don't have to by law. But she, she didn't even care. I was like, you don't care. Wouldn't give me your name. It was like, finally she was like, just get out. And I'm like, so I had to shut up because I just wanted my phone fixed. Five guys. Five brand new phones. Three in the last two months. Brand new. In the box. Why? Because agreed we buy we they buy junk. Shove it off on us. It's happening all over the place, guys. So but that could make you anxious, but we just you know. Scale of one to ten is five thousand on the 
on the amping of the stress level, but I still have to bring it to the Lord. I've learned some things in it. I've learned some patience in it. The phone's fixed. The car's not yet. Only where I'm getting with him is I told him I'm going to get a lawyer and call the state bar of insurance. And then I saw some movement. Just towed my car yesterday. From the pound. So I was like, man, guys, I've got uninsured and underinsured. And the party that hit me, I've got all his insurance information. Just fix my car. Where's my rental car? So it's like, man, I'm just going to get one myself, solve it, and probably go the route of an attorney, honestly. But so it's like, okay, Lord, I'm still praying about that. I'm bringing it to him. So it's like, and all the stuff that's going on all around with the COVID and all the lies and all the ministry stuff. I'm like, man, okay, God. So I've said that as a backdrop. Because sometimes that old saying, there's one really good old saying, put the shoe on the other foot. So walk in somebody else's shoe. I'm not looking for even empathy from you guys or anything. I'm using that as an example to say there's some things that people are going through that we may not even be aware of. But when we go to bring to prayer and supplication before the Lord. The other one is, I think it was Eisenhower. The buck stops here. It was all about personal accountability. And that's what the Lord wants from us. And you're going to get it in your early morning prayer or whenever you can pray. Back to, well, back to, you know, that I ministered to this kid at the manufacturer when he got a new phone. And he was a Christian too. So the Lord still worked that out. Steve had to die out a little bit because I was really, really mad, frustrated. You would be too. Because I pay for this every month. I just wanted a phone that worked. That was all, guys. But he's trying to wear us out. So they can get into here. Because when you're really tired and exhausted. Uh, or, or, or hungry. Or you know. You're just. Man you can. You do some things you may not do. Normally do. And that's what the enemy's trying to do. With all this mess that's going on right now. I'm not politicizing it. It's a mess. I'm my messages haven't changed. <clears throat> They're evolving, but they haven't changed into the the, the stand the, the word of the Lord. I'm firmly planted on that rock. It is about life and death. It is about all lives matter. Put that out there as a message that all this non essential where do you think that came from? The enemy wants our value is nothing. Well, guess what? Back to the book of life, back to your prayer. What does that say? John 3 16. For God's so loved the world that he gave us all the world. A handful of idiots, honestly. Some doctor that has no business there. To, you know, he's talking about April of having, why do we even need a vaccine? I have some medical issues and I have to take some inexpensive drugs that work. It's $8 for a 90 day supply and there's another one that could cost $1,000. Well, why would I want to take the $1,000 one? Well, why can't we, you know? This is a little bit straightforward, but what killed Chris Como, Tom Hanks, Paul Rand, or even our president? Nothing. They all, got, they all got over it. Yes, they're, I'm not mocking or belittling those people that have died from it because it's sad that it was somebody's parents, children, mothers, fathers, 
Not good. Hurtful. But this fear-based nonsense, not good either. Like I said, it's all for a handful of people. This is one of the messages I got, but I'm going to throw this in there. It's the GMO. Give me all your glory, money, and your opinion doesn't matter. Just you give me your obedience. Wear a mask. It doesn't work. Look at them. They're two bucks at the store counter now. They're cheap. If you wear a bandana, people don't say nothing. Bandana, guys. Come on, give me a break. And the best you can do is um, over a year later, or almost a year later, still nothing except for how worse it's getting and getting and getting, and then you try to blame the president that he is in actions or whatever. And, and so, okay, great, fine, point the finger. But what have you done, Dr. Fossey? Nothing. But create more. If you, there's any truth to how this all evolved and started, man, you should be the one that it should be out behind the woodshed. And that's saying it lightly. Guys, you've got to bring this before the Lord in prayer and supplication so that we get divine, Holy Ghost filled direction. Or we're going to be locked down and destroyed as a nation for the greed of a few, power trip of a few. Do you think some of those people, do you think they're going to miss a meal? Look at one of the posts. All those major companies, their profits are up 100%, to 80%. They're making money off of this. While others are suffering, losing their whole livelihood. And being locked down. Look at all of it. Look at how crazy and evil a lot of these mayors are acting and governors and just like dictators. Right along the lines of Hitler, guys. I'm serious. So how are we going to break this? We're going to break through in prayer, supplication, and bring it to the Lord and watching him move because then he'll get the glory. Not Trump, not Biden. Not some crazy lawyer, elected official, whatever. No, he wants the glory. That's what, what my message was. He's going to do something about this. If we ask him and bring it before him in prayer and supplication. Instead of barking on all these social medias. Everybody wants to be a prophet or apostle in this. Say something that, man, when I read the job description... Take up your cross and follow me. Why would you even want to be? Unfortunately, a lot of them aren't. Some of them are, but a lot of them aren't. Because it's all the same thing that ties in with the... It, it's not the fear stuff, but it's the sensationalism of it. Prayer and supplication. Time to weep between the porch and the altar. 5 a.m. prayer, and the reason why there's such an importance to that is because A, 5 is the, is the sign of grace, but B, it's quiet. You can turn off your phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever, TV, get a hold of God. Your wife's not up, your husband's not up, your kids aren't up. And some of you, that's one of the kids I witnessed to yesterday, well, you know, he can't because he some of the, he, I forget what he was doing, but he's got some work constraints on that, you know, he, he can at five in the morning. That's okay. Most of us, but not all of us can. But what I'm saying, guys, so pick, pick whatever time you can be available, but get a hold of God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. Love you guys. Um, talk to you soon. Um...
Philippians 4, 6, 4 through 8, and Acts 13, 1 through 12. Love you guys. Uh, talk to you soon.